If you're watching this video on the day it came out, then Apple just released its iOS 14 and iPadOS 14 public betas. And with that, I'm sure a bunch of you just clicked away to go install the software. And I really can't blame you for that. But since we took a little time to dig through what made iOS 14 special a little earlier this year, I wanted to take some more time to walk through what's going on in iPadOS 14, which to be fair is maybe not the most substantial iPad update I've ever seen. And that's perhaps not a fair thing to say. I mean, Apple kind of started to rewrite the rule book last year with its first release of iPadOS. With that software update, Apple started moving the iPad in a distinct direction, just to give the iPad more of a distinct identity compared to the software available on iPhones and what you'd find on its Mac computers. Where exactly the iPad will inevitably land is still completely up in the air, but we're already on a hell of a ride, and that ride continues with iPadOS 14. Now, let me just get this out of the way up front. A lot of the changes that Apple has made to iOS 14 have found their way into iPadOS 14. Obviously, as the name suggests, they do share a strong central foundation. Uh, that includes things like a smarter and less obtrusive Siri, just app tweaks and updates across the board, a renewed focus on privacy, and a lot of other things that I'm really not gonna get into now because we did, as I've said, touch on them before. What's really been interesting to see though is how some of the features Apple has implemented in iOS 14 have sort of morphed in their transition to the iPads. They're still there, but different. I don't think there's a better example of that than the home screen. On iOS 14, as you may already know, Apple has finally embraced fully customizable, resizable widgets that you can throw anywhere on the home screen. Now, when I tried out iOS 14, and as I continue to try iOS 14, I am just sort of taken aback by how helpful these things are, which that shouldn't be a huge surprise because I do use Android very frequently, but to have that sort of glanceable information ready for me on an iPhone is a really nice change of pace. And I was kind of hoping we'd see the same on iPads, but it's not really the same. For one, you can add widgets to the home screen, but not in any sort of new way. With iPadOS 13 last year, you were able to lock the sort of today view sidebar on the edge of the screen and store some widgets there. And that's basically the only place you can put widgets this year as well. They have the new design, but you can only keep them in this one place, which feels a little limiting. I feel for anyone who really wanted to trick out the way their iPads look because you do sort of lose out on that functionality. But that's kind of small fries compared to this next change, the app library, which kind of gave iOS users an overflow area for all of their installed apps. So you could just have the stuff that you use semi-regularly in there and keep your home screens nice and tight. That doesn't actually exist here at all, which I don't understand. It's a tremendously helpful feature, if only because it allows people to exercise more control over what information and what tools they have immediate access to. If you're anything like me, you know you have apps that you use regularly enough to warrant keeping on your device, but not enough to warrant looking at it all of the time. And that's exactly what the app library was meant to cater to. It keeps all of those things in one place, ready for you when you need them. The fact that it's not here on a device that in no way is impervious to the kind of messiness that you'll find on an iPhone kind of boggles the mind. I actually got to ask Apple why the app library doesn't exist on the iPad and their answer basically boiled down to, well, it just didn't really make sense on a tablet. Not because it wasn't useful, but because iPads have the dock and because of the search functionality, it's a little easier to get to the app that you want without having to jump into something like the library fair, I guess, but it still would have been nice, right? But trust me, the interface changes do not end there. I think the one I've probably run into the most is the new search interface, which is mostly because after years of using Spotlight on my Mac almost exclusively to launch apps, I mean, that's the context that I bring to iPads. That's what I want to do, and I've always been able to do that, but the way Apple has approached search has kind of shifted a bit. If you're used to older versions of iPadOS or even iOS on your iPad, you'll know that searching for something on your iPad brings up a ton of results. If you're searching for an app name, then you'll see a shortcut for the app, but then you'll see links to related websites and apps in the App Store that are sort of related to the app that you're talking about and a bunch of other stuff. That approach was helpful in that it kind of gave you everything you might want about a particular thing, but it just kind of felt like overkill. With iPadOS 14, Apple has really tried to focus and downsize that experience. And I don't just mean in terms of search results, although that is true. 
It used to be that when you searched for something on an iPad, the search interface would take up the entire screen, pulling you out of whatever it was you were trying to do before you needed to look something up. Now, just like on a Mac, you get a much more compact window that frankly looks a lot like Spotlight on a Mac. If you've used that before, if that feature is meaningful to you, then you'll find a lot of that same value here. What's really interesting is the way Apple has sort of organized these results. Let's take that example of the app again. If you search for an app's name, you will indeed get a shortcut to that app, but you'll also get Siri suggestions for search queries involving that app's name and sort of related topics that you might find helpful. It doesn't just give you a list of links, it gives you the option to tap something and jump into a search in Safari iPadOS 14 will also give you the option to search for that same term in other apps like notes or mail. Now that might sound familiar and that's because iPadOS did that before, but it just kind of gave it all to you regardless of whether you actually wanted it. The keyword here seems to be focus. Apple has dramatically downsized the amount of stuff that you see when you search for something. Now, to be clear, if you actually poke around in the options that this new search provides you, all of the results are still there. Everything that you would have found in iPadOS 13 is still available as a search result in iPadOS 14. You just have to poke around a little bit more for it. And I know some people are not gonna like this. Personally, I don't like the idea of being presented less information, but I do understand Apple's desire to give people an overall cleaner experience. Half, or I mean, let's be honest, more than half of the results that I get searching for something were completely irrelevant to what I wanted to do at the time, Apple seems to get that is the case for me and presumably other people because you get jumping off points to search in other things, but it never overloads you with search results you just do not need. Search isn't the only thing that got a nice little facelift. A lot of the iPad apps that you might use regularly, like photos or files or music, got a bit of a retool as well, and in a similar way than you might expect. It used to be that if you fired up the music app or the files app or the calendar, for instance, you'd have to do a little poking around to find exactly the controls or options that you were looking for. Never too much, to be clear, but enough that finding just the right setting took a little bit of work. That's not the case with iPadOS 14. Again, at least as far as these apps are concerned, they've been redesigned with sidebars in mind. So you can, in most cases, swipe them open and access additional controls. Some apps actually just have the sidebar sitting next to it, like files is a great example. That thing just sits there and continues to give you quick access to whatever subfolder or folder that you want to be in at any moment. Now, it might seem a little silly to get riled up over sidebars in some apps, but I think it says something really interesting about the direction Apple is taking with its software. On some level, those sidebars are just nice to have because if you're using an iPad with a mouse or a trackpad, which you can do with basically all iPads at this point, then you've got a single place for your cursor to hang out in and find all of the controls and locations that you might need access to. What's also interesting is that you can kind of see a convergence off in the distance that Apple is kind of working towards now. Sidebars, to me at least, feel like a very desktop-y visual metaphor, something that we've seen in Finder on Macs and in any number of other apps on Macs for years now. On the flip side, Macs running Mac OS Big Sur, which is going to be the first update to natively support Apple Silicon Macs, you see the ability to run iPad apps natively on these devices, and you see flourishes like a control center that looks remarkably touch-friendly. We are looking at the slow motion intersection of iPad software and Mac software. We'll get there eventually, and it's anyone's guess as to what exactly the software will look like once we get to that convergence point, but I think it's really interesting to see both of these platforms taking design cues from each other as they kind of eventually move down this collision course. Of all these many changes though, some of the ones that feel most valuable, most new, are also completely optional. I'm talking about what Apple has done with the Apple Pencil. It's kind of a big deal. The Apple Pencil has always been a really great tool for sketching, but in this release anyway, Apple has kind of taken its note-taking chops to the next level. If you're writing in the Notes app, you can tap a specific pen in the palette and just have your handwriting converted directly into proper legible text. I have noticed though that when I'm writing on the screen in this mode that just transcribes my writing and I pause to collect my thoughts, sometimes the cursor just jumps down and starts a new line. Even though I haven't moved my hand at all, I'm still writing in the exact same space, iPadOS just decides, no, no, it's a new paragraph now. That is incorrect. 
Uh, Apple has told me that that is not expected behavior and they're working on it. So if you do notice that, it should get fixed, but it is a little annoying for now. It's also really easy to select and manipulate your own handwriting. Just double tap on whatever you've just written and you can cut, you can paste, you can convert that into text. It is remarkably helpful, especially if you're very finicky about how you lay your notes out in the app. This might be a bit more niche, but if you're the kind of person who relies heavily on diagrams in your note-taking, you can sort of draw a geometric figure and hold for a sec. iPadOS will convert that into a more geometrically precise figure, so cool, your notes will look super awesome. The biggest change for me at least is a feature Apple calls Scribble, which dramatically increases the scope of the Apple Pencil's use. Long story short, if there's any text deal that you happen to come across while using your iPad, you can write directly in it using the Apple Pencil. And like I've said before, the handwriting recognition quality is actually pretty good. Uh, you can put down your eat up Martha Simpsons memes now. We're more or less past that at this point. Now, if you really wanted to, you could sort of bop back and forth between your text fields and that shortcut panel that I just mentioned and make it work with one hand. So if you're holding your iPad like a clipboard and sort of going back and forth, that is doable, but that's a lot of back and forth and that takes a while. So you really do need to kind of figure out the best ways for you to use both hands to really use this stuff at speed. Now, there are a bunch of other things happening in iPadOS 14 that make it feel feature complete and fun in some strange ways. Apple Music getting a full screen redesign is probably one of my favorite examples. You can basically get the lyrics playing next to whatever song you're listening to, which turns your iPad into a karaoke machine, which is ideal for me because all of the karaoke spots that I frequent are no longer open and probably won't be because singing in small rooms is, from a health perspective, a terrible idea. So I'm just going to do it here in my basement. That feels like a lot that we've just gone through. And trust me, there is still a lot more. And we'll continue digging into the iPad OS 14 build now and as we get closer to its official launch in September. In the meantime, if you have any feedback about iPad OS 14, the sort of beta process, how we've approached it, or really anything, please leave some down in the comments below or email me at v8engadget.com. Thank you for watching our quick run through, well, maybe not so quick at this point, our run through of what iPadOS 14 brings to the table. It's a really interesting signifier that we're in this transitional state between what iPad was and what iPad will be, but we're definitely on the road now and I can't wait to see where it goes.